Hey, what's going on guys? Today we got this uh, beautiful 2011 Mazda 2 and today I'm going to show you how you can easily and safely remove and replace the alternator on this vehicle. This is a 2011 Mazda 2. All right, so first thing you'll do is pop the hood open and uh, remove the negative terminal on the battery. And that's a 10 millimeter. I'm also replacing the battery on this vehicle. So we'll just get this and just get it out of the way. As the name says, it did die pretty hard. The next thing we're going to do is locate the alternator, which is right there in the front of the vehicle, and also the location of the tensioner pulley, which is towards the back of the engine, right there. After you've determined that, the next thing you'll want to do is get a pen and paper. And just for, uh, you know, so you have less headache, um, just draw out the route the belt takes. And as you can see, this is the tensioner, the idler, the alternator, AC compressor, main pulley, and water pump, and the direction it goes in. All right, so next thing you'll need is a serpentine belt removal tool if you got one of these it'll help you a bit um, so you want to go ahead and attach it to the tensioner pulley there it's a 14 millimeter socket um, a wrench is not going to work here so if you don't have this tool you're going to have to use a shallow 14 mil on a ratchet and uh, try to get it out of there. So next you want to do is pull this towards you to release the tension. And then uh, once you have the tension released, you can go ahead and remove the belt from the alternator. All right, guys. So uh, once you got the belt off the pulley, just put it to the side like that. Uh, try to not to get them off all the pulleys. You just want to clear the alternator, that's all. Um, so next, what you want to do is disconnect the uh, main plug from the alternator. And this just has a tab that you just push it in and pull it out. And then after that, you will need to remove the B+. Plus. Uh, wire from the alternator. This is a 12 millimeter and Just a tip here for you guys Whenever you're changing an alternator or a starter It's always recommended that when you disconnect the negative terminal that you should also disconnect the positive terminal Only because if you don't disconnect the positive terminal there is a possibility that uh, when you're going to remove the positive battery terminal from the alternator or the starter that you could short out your ra ratchet that you're using so for example if you got your ratchet here and your positive terminal still connected it's a small possibility but if you touch this well maybe not this let's say something along here that's grounded so now you'll have positive and ground so it's much better to disconnect both terminals um, in my case, I'm changing the battery, so I got both terminals off and the battery out, and there's no concern over that. Um, it has happened to me in the past where I wasn't really paying attention, forgot that the positive was still on, and I grounded out a starter bolt at one time. So, um, yeah, disconnect both terminals and you should be fine. Okay, so the B plus terminal here is a 12 millimeter socket. Once you got that removed, 
Um, you should be able to now to get this harness out of the way. And it's uh, not easy working with one hand. So uh, I'll put this down for a second. All right, so we got the uh, B plus terminal off. And just so you know, you, can, you guys can thank the Mazda engineers there. There, You'll need a small pick because this is a clip here. And there's also another clip down here. So what you'll need is a, a pick tool like this just to pry that up so you can force it forward okay and now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove this clip and also the bottom one down here so we can release the harness from the alternator there's a plastic clip here and then we'll go ahead and start removing the bolts for the alternator itself All right, guys, so there's two bolts. There's one right here, and then another one at the bottom right there. And they're both 14 millimeters. And uh, thanks to Mazda Engineering, uh, as you'll see here, in order to remove this bolt, you must first remove this bolt so that we can get the uh, this little bracket that they're using uh, to hold the AC line up for some reason so if you can see there's a tab right here that won't allow this bolt to come forward so first we must remove this bolt and then this bolt Alright guys, uh, so we got the top bolt off there, and uh, just a note, the bottom bolt, you don't have to remove it all the way, um, because of the way the bracket is designed, and I'm going to show you that once I get the alternator out, and uh, here again is that 14 we had to remove to get access to the top alternator bolt, and I mentioned this was an AC line, it's not, it's a vacuum line, and it goes straight into the intake there. So, alright, so now we're ready to get this alternator out, and uh, once I have it out, I'll show you how to do that. Alright guys, so there's the new alternator, or rebuilt, and this is the old alternator here. Uh, just a couple of things, number one, I was totally wrong about the bottom bolt. Um, it's a lot better for you to remove it completely because as you see the design of the bottom bracket there it is cut out to allow you to slide the bolt out here but it would be just easier just to take the bolt out completely and in order to do that all you have to do set up the light here all you have to do is first disconnect the AC uh, line from this clip just pop it up and then there'll be another one here at the bottom right about here just pop that out so you can have play on this line and then the bolt will slide right through so yeah it's you could leave it there but it's it's better you just take it out completely okay and uh, removing the alternator was pretty tedious Again, thanks to Mazda Engineering, um, they really didn't leave you a lot of room. And the main issue was this uh, AC line right here. It goes right across the top of the alternator. And because it's metal at the bottom and, and a hose at the top, it doesn't have any flex or give at all. So what you have to do, or at least what I did, was I took this vacuum line and moved it right here 
as you can see just let it rest on top of the engine bracket there I took the harness moved it aside also and I managed to maneuver it right through this slot here between the AC line and the vacuum line um, I tried to take it out through the side here but there was no room at all you would hit the headlight here just plugs are in the way um, there's it was just not enough space to take it out through the side but I managed to squeeze it out of here by maneuvering the alternator several times so that I could uh, just pull it out of there. It was a very tight spot, but uh, you will be able to get it out. All right, so now I'm just gonna start putting everything back together. The installation part is obviously just in the reverse order. Um, the last thing you'll do is connect your battery and uh, that's about all. So again, I hope this video was helpful and informative. And if it was, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great day.